and a warm welcome to you on this, the second Sunday of Epiphany, where the theme is the calling of disciples. We welcome you to this beautiful church of Mottiston, whether you're tuning in from here in West White or further afield. We are very pleased to have with us this evening the Reverend Lynn Jones, who is going to preach to us this evening. Um, we're very pleased to have him here before he returns shortly to the Diocese of Carlisle. And our worship this evening is enhanced by three of our resident musicians, and we're grateful to them for their music. So we begin with our first hymn, which is number 53, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. Most worthy praise to hear his most holy word, 
and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying with me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have heard and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable enemies. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises, declare them to thy man right, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant and thy merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a lovely, righteous, and sober life. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us, keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Search me out and know me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts long before. Thou art about my path and about my bed, and spiest out all my ways. Although there is not a word in my tongue, but thou, O Lord, knowest it altogether. Thou hast fashioned me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful and excellent for me. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go then from thy spirit? Or whither shall I go then from thy presence? If I climb up into heaven, thou art there. I go down to hell, thou art there also. If I take the wings of the morning and remain in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there also shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and, the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first reading is taken from the first book of Samuel. The boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli, 
The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Here ends the lesson. The second reading is taken from John, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, 
follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, Father which art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy, thy will be done. In, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. 
Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. second hymn, which is number 392, Lord Jesus, Once You Spoke. <clears throat> receive your word for us this evening, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Turn with me in your Bible to the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, where we find the very straightforward story of Jesus calling Philip to be his disciple in verse 43. Philip's response is to hold on to the truth revealed to him that Jesus foretold in the law of the prophets of the Old Testament. By hold on, by hold on, I mean that Philip didn't deviate from that which had been revealed to him. He didn't try to change the circumstances, make it more understandable before holding it out to Nathaniel. See, Philip might have been tempted to say, hey, there's a really good preacher in town. Or, I think there's someone you should meet, Nathaniel. It could be really good for the fishing business. No, 
Philip trusted and obeyed the God of the scriptures who had revealed himself to him. And in obedience held out this revelation to Nathaniel plainly. He told him that this is what was foretold in the law and the prophets. Well, my reading is that, at first at least, Nathaniel didn't particularly want to hear that. God appearing in this way just didn't fit in with Nathaniel's expectations. God appearing in this way just didn't fit the mould of who Nathaniel wanted the coming Messiah to be. So he scoffs at it. You're having a laugh, man. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Ultimate though, ultimately, though, we see in verse 49, Nathaniel exclaims, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Nathaniel, like Philip, trusted and obeyed. Well, in summary of this passage, God revealed himself. Philip held on accurately to the truth of that revelation. And then held it out, passed it on to someone who didn't want to hear it who then went on to own that truth for himself and become a, a, adopted into the family of God. Because John identifies Jesus as the promised Messiah from the Older Testament, I guess we can't fully understand this passage without reference to the Older Testament reading from the first book of Samuel, chapter 3. If you have your Bible with you, turn to it. It's another plain story. The boy Samuel lives on site in the tabernacle as an assistant to old Eli, the priest. One night, he thinks he hears Eli calling for him and goes to see what he wants. Eli says, I've not called you. Go back to bed. Samuel hears the voice again, and the same pattern is repeated another twice, before both Samuel and Eli realise that it's God who is calling, God who is revealing himself to Samuel. From that point on, Samuel trusts and obeys. He holds on to the truth of the revelation that he has received. And right from the start, right from the start, he's called upon to apply the word of God, without sugarcoating it, to someone who didn't want to hear it. Similar to Nathaniel in the New Testament reading. Well, we have to look on a little to verses 11 to 18 to see that Samuel was actually trembling when he told Eli the uncomfortable truth that God's wrath was about to fall upon the family of Eli. Eli didn't want to hear it, but equally... Samuel didn't particularly want to say it. It was hurtful and offensive, but true. And Samuel had to hold on to that truth, not deviate from it, and then hold it out to Eli. He had to tell him. In summary of this passage, in a way, it echoes the Newer Testament reading. God revealed himself, this time to Samuel. Samuel held on accurately 
to the truth of that revelation. And then held it out, passed it on to someone who didn't want to hear Eli. All well and good. But what's this got to do with us in West White this evening? As Christians, we have the one who calls himself the truth. Check it out in John chapter 14. Like Samuel and Philip, our task is to hold on to that truth. Not turn ourselves inside out by trying to make it more palatable to a, an increasingly aggressive secular society. And sometimes holding on to that truth is difficult and holding it out even more challenging. Let me give you an example. As a prison chaplain, I once had to go and tell a young man that his mother had died unexpectedly. After checking the details with the coroner and making sure that I had the right prisoner, I went to do what had to be done. I never beat around the bush with these things. I knocked on his door, let myself in, introduced myself briefly, quickly following up with there's no easy way to tell you this Billy your mom has died there was a stunned silence for a second or two that felt like an hour to me then Billy exploded liar liar get out of my cell you, you effing liar I left Billy's cell of course. But what else, what else could I have done or said? What were my options? Would it have been right to soften the blow, water it down by saying something like, your mother has fallen asleep, Billy. Or Billy, your mum has left this world to be with the angels. No, the harsh truth was that she had died and I had to tell him, even though he didn't want to hear it. Oh, unless, of course, I just didn't say anything to him at all. I was a bit busy that day. And anyway, he would have found out sooner or later without me having the embarrassment of, of having, the, having to bring the news to him. None of these options are feasible, are they? Billy had to be told the plain truth, even though it was difficult to hear. And someone had to tell him. He couldn't be allowed to find out the hard way. And for us in West White, the uncomfortable truth is we are all sinners. Sinners who have fallen short of the glory of God, we're told in Romans 3.23. But the world says, liar, liar, get out of my life, you liar. The uncomfortable truth from 1 John is that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But the world responds, liar, liar, get out of my life, you liar. But Christians have the truth, the word of God revealed to us in the Bible. That's what it has to do with us in West White because when we trust and obey when we hold on to that which has been revealed to us in scripture when we understand that we are sinners in need of a saviour then and only then can we point others to that saviour 
Jesus. The one whom God sent. Why? Because God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now that's the gospel to trust and obey. That's the gospel to hold on to. That's the gospel to hold out. That's the gospel to proclaim to West White and to the world. Now we rejoice to name him King. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. This gospel message we proclaim, we sing his glory, tell his worth. Amen. Now let us pray. Loving Father, we beseech you to hear the prayers and petitions we bring before you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Whilst we sit amidst a season that looks, feels, is, very different from normal. We do thank you that while we may not be able to be with our families and loved ones in person, we know that you are always with them. So where there is weariness, would you bring your rest where there is hopelessness, would you bring fresh encouragement? Where there is despair, bring hope. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Everlasting God, you Choose people to send forth as workers into your vineyard. The world that you have trusted to us as stewards. You spoke to awaken Samuel with your call. Lord, reawaken the eyes and ears of your people in West White and across the world to the gospel of Jesus, that we may be ever conscious of loving God and loving our neighbour in these last days. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Merciful God, your son, Jesus Christ, wept at the grave of Lazarus, his friend. Be with us in our mourning as we pray for all who are coming to the end of their journey here on earth. And for all those who have died in Christ and now rejoice in the fullness of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our Queen, for the government and for the opposition parties, that they may rule with wisdom sensitivity, compassion and justice, knowing whose servants they are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
loving God, you called Philip and Nathaniel and all the apostles to be ambassadors for Christ and gave them the power to heal. Help, help us to bring healing by our visits, our care and our prayers that we may strengthen the spirits of those we love especially at this time when the pandemic is still so virulent and so many are affected both in body and spirit and specifically Lord we pray for those known to us those whose names locally are circulated on the on the notice sheet Lord Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we rejoice in the call to trust and obey, to be united with the successors of your Gospels. So send us out in this coming week to live and proclaim the Gospel in West White and beyond. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we sing our final hymn, and you may sing if you're at home, and we will listen here to the cantors. Number 142, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be with us, all those we love and care for, all those we have prayed for. 
this night and every.